Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, The Planted Carly Flower. I'm Carly and welcome back to yet another Hoya care video. Today we are going to discuss Hoya Imbricata, a very unusual looking Hoya that is a whole lot of fun. So stick with me and we will get to, into how to take care of Hoya Imbricata. To be daring, baby, dance the night away I let my head down if I won Don't you just get tired chasing fame and being pretty all the time Okay guys, Hoya Imbricata. Now, I know a lot of people who are not necessarily into Hoyas always use the reason that all Hoyas look alike to them. They all look similar, they all have the green leaves, yada yada yada. Well, here is a Hoya that looks unlike any other Hoya I have ever seen. This is Hoya Imbricata. He's a beautiful one for sure. Let's see if I can get some focus here. baby leaf right there. This Hoya almost resembles lily pads, um, in my opinion. Um, Hoya imbricata is a is an ep epiphyte, so it is a climbing Hoya. It does have leaves that grow very close together, almost like a wrap, and they do like to climb up. I'll put a picture here showing you what it looks like when it's climbing. And they attach to trees and they live their lives. They are a very tropical plant. Um, and honestly, they are actually most useful in the wild to ant colonies. Ant colonies use the leaves almost like little nurseries. They will lay their eggs underneath the dome of the leaf and protect their offspring that way. And they live in a very symbiotic relationship with ants. Um, Ants in certain parts of the world would lose a major part of their own habitat if anything were to actually happen to Hoya imbricata, which I thought was actually really, really interesting. Um, as you can see, the leaves are rounded. Let's see if I can find you a good example. I guess over here is going to be the best. The leaves are rounded. These are actually two leaves on top of each other, and there's a third leaf underneath it. Um, they are very, very fast growers in the right conditions. This plant, let me set it down before I drop it. This plant requires a lot of humidity, guys. I'm talking like 90% humidity to grow well. Luckily, my Millsville cabinet provides it with just the love and attention that it needs to shoot off the charts. I got this plant with only three leaves um, about two months ago, and it currently has nine leaves with one on the way. They don't look like it has a lot of leaves because they all grow so close together. I am getting a terrarium soon, and this is the perfect plant for a terrarium. When I get my terrarium, I am absolutely going to give this a moss pole to climb up and to attach to almost like little suction cups and I think it will be even happier then. So I'm excited for that to happen. Mature Hoya imbricatas can grow very large. I'm not talking necessarily about the size of the pads but the branching effect. It can grow hundreds of feet up a tree if given the right conditions. It will grow numerous leaves from branches and it will branch out and it'll just wrap all around trees and it actually looks beautiful in my opinion. Now Hoya Imbricata is a little bit more on the finicky side. I would not recommend this Hoya to a new Hoya parent or plant parent. I would recommend they start with something a little less demanding. Um, Hoya Imbricata needs lots of water. It's from a very tropical area. It does love to be misted. It loves to be in a water rich environment. Very very thick and rainforest like. Like I said it needs 90 some percent humidity or higher in order to actually uh, do well for you. And if you put it in a situation where it's not getting humidity, it may not necessarily die, but it's basically just going to exist for you. It's not going to do a whole lot. Um, you have to give it that high, high humidity, and it absolutely loves bright, bright light. You can get this plant to, uh, to thrive in artificial light, absolutely. If you're using grow lights or anything like that, um, it works really well but it does like a very bright light i wouldn't necessarily give it direct light but it must be very bright 
Now, as far as soil or a substrate goes for this plant, like I said, it likes it very moist. Um, it's not unusual to see these as mounted plants with the root ball and sphagnum and then like a board or pole or something for it to climb up. That would be absolutely suitable. Mine is currently a LECA and doing very well with that. I do mist it regularly. Um, although with the humidity that's in, in my house, it probably doesn't need the misting, but I like giving it the extra love and attention. Um, this plant is very, very difficult to flower outside of its natural habitat. It's one of the hardest Hoyas to actually get a peduncle and, and, and produce actual buds from. Um, some of the most prolific Hoya cultivists in the United States have had a very hard time flowering this plant. If you are interested in seeing what it takes to actively grow and flower Ohio and Bricotta, I highly recommend you check out Doug, Doug Chamberlain's YouTube channel. I will link it down below. He spent years tending to this plant, trying to get it to flower, and was finally successful. Um, you will get to see the absolute it's 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 almost alien like the way this plant takes over when it's in an environment that it really prefers and it's actually really really cool I if you have the 20 ish minutes to take check out Doug Chamberlain's videos I highly recommend that you do so because it's very very interesting the how he got this plant to flower finally Hoya imbricata is gonna like your warmer temperatures. It will not be a fan of getting cold at all. I wouldn't put this plant in anything below 65 degrees Fahrenheit or 18 degrees Celsius because it will definitely experience some chill damage and you definitely don't want that. Keep it nice and warm and this plant will stay nice and happy for you. As far as fertilization, like most Hoyas, it's not an overly heavy feeder, but it will appreciate being fertilized from time to time. I would do it bi-weekly to monthly. Um, I do mine in LECA bi-weekly with all my other plants. I use Dynagro foliage, which I will put a picture of here. This is what I use for all my LECA and pond plants, and it does seem to be responding very nicely to that. I have also given it liquid dirt, and it also seemed to enjoy that as well. So if you're using liquid dirt for all your other plants, it will suffice as well for the Hoya Imbricata. Um, my Hoya Imbricata has not really grown roots in a very big amount, but I know that the plant is happy because it has put out so many leaves and is not losing any. Um, I don't find that the Hoya Imbricata would require a whole lot of repotting. Hoyas typically like to be root bound anyway, so go ahead and just change the soil out, I'd say every couple years, and you'll probably be doing just fine with that. Propagating a Hoya Imbricata is pretty similar to any other Hoya. Go ahead and take a stem cutting of one or two nodes and with some leaves on it obviously for that bringing in of the nutrients from the sun and plop it in some water or leca or substrate of your choice. Moss would also work. Um, I have never tried to propagate one in soil. I don't find that to be the best method for me, but you're absolutely welcome to try it if you're into that kind of a propagation method. Um, I would definitely recommend playing with your plants, trying to propagate them, share them with your friends. Um, I've only propagated it once and it was successful and I gave it away locally, but you never know, I might try it again sometime. Now as far as the growth pattern, we talked about that a little earlier on in the video, but let's touch on it a little more deeply. Uh, Hoya imbricata is a shingling plant. Like I mentioned, it does climb up trees or moss poles or planks or whatever you want it to grow up and it will only produce one leaf per node. That node will typically produce aerial roots which will attach it to whatever it's climbing up and it's actually very cool looking. I'll put some video or pictures up of climbing imbricata so that you can see what that looks like but it's absolutely, oh excuse me, I'm allergies are killing me. It's absolutely one of the coolest plants I've ever seen. It's very alien like to me. It almost looks like it doesn't belong in this world for some reason. It's really really neat and I would highly recommend one for the experienced plant enthusiast that wants to try something a little more difficult to keep. Uh, I haven't had any pests on this plant so I can't really speak to how it would react to different pest infestations. Um, I would suspect, like most Hoyas, it's susceptible to mealybugs, thrips, uh, spider mites. Spider mites might be particularly hard to, to see on this plant because spider mites tend to like the bottoms of leaves and you really don't see the bottom of these leaves very often. They tend to curl around themselves unless they are climbing something and then if they're climbing something, the bottom of the leaf is against whatever they're climbing. Um, it has responded well for me to regular pest prevention with neem oil. I 
recommend that. You could also use a systematic insecticide to passively treat pests and keep that, the pets at bay that way as well. But that would be Hoya Imbricata. I hope that this was comprehensive for you and gave you an idea of what to expect if you were trying to pick up one of these plants. If you have any questions, absolutely leave me a comment down below. I would greatly love that. I would love to talk with you. I'd love to converse with you. You can also find me on Instagram. My link tree is down below with my TikTok and Instagram links. And I would love to find you guys there as well. Thank you so much for joining me for a look at Hoya Imbricata. And I hope you all get to spend a lot of quality time today. Day with your plant babies. Thank you.